for staying from some more databases and um, I'll maybe go a little straighter to the point, uh, the question of the sustainability uh, and see how uh, through our project uh, archaeologists we uh, handle with these uh, issues because uh, it's an obvious question. Actually, uh, in France at least, the technical questions uh, I found were the easiest to solve because they they are just technical. You need a good server, uh, you need your eyes, uh, you need to follow the inspire, that kind of stuff. Once you discover it, uh, is pretty clear. And to me, the use and reuse of data seems the best way to guarantee the sustainability. Because if a project stopped, but somebody reused the data somewhere else, uh, it is good. Uh, just what uh, is mentioned before, even if it's some guys from the construction that reuse our data, at least they will save them on their own servers. So uh, when they close all the universities, <laughs> we will have our data uh, saved somewhere. Um, another thing is that I think that uh, avoiding proprietary formats uh, always seem a good idea. So, uh, because yes, we have no money uh, and it's complicated for our uh, yeah, universities, where I work, uh, to pay every year uh, for a software, that kind of trouble. And for our end users, it's the same. Uh, for the students, if you say, yeah, you have to buy an artist license before you start a PhD, it is difficult. And even for the solutions we offer, uh, that the users have no extra costs uh, to pay also seem important for the sustainability of the projects uh, as projects. So when we look more specifically at the heritage management databases, well, you found them in most of the regions or in most of the countries, they exist in very different quality, very different, we discussed this, uh, standards formats. Uh, one problem that we have as archaeologists is that archaeology is not always good described. For example, you often have just one uh, cell for Iron Age, but no difference between Hallstatt and Latin, which is not very uh, easy uh, to handle. And a lot of those projects have a long history back in the 80s or even before. And this is also uh, a problem because uh, you cannot track back uh, who uh, modified or who implemented uh, the data. <coughs> this is really a problem for sustainability. If you want to use something, you want to know where it comes from and uh, who manipulated it, who made the mistakes <laughs> and uh, who, how you can uh, make it better. So uh, this is really uh, very important and uh, goes with the problem of the quality check that's always coming uh, back when we discuss this. Then another problem is the access to the data. In France, which is in theory a centralized uh, country, in the Bretagne you have everything online, in Alsace you can get access to the data, and in Provence it's impossible to get <laughs> to access the data. So. Um, it is always difficult. It's yes part of the social uh, contract when you have to discuss, give me your data. And uh, this is a, a recurrent problem for us researchers, but of course also for students or for uh, commercial archaeologists, uh, which has not always an easy access uh, to this. And uh, the numerous uh, databases that researchers or PhD students or projects created are mostly not incorporated in the uh, archaeology, archaeology heritage management databases. I mean, the, the data come in after the excavation, after the rescue excavation, but any further docs or projects reworking the data most of the time are not incorporated. So those are the kind of problem uh, that I think are important uh, in those issues. So well, uh, but the history, as I said, we go back in the 80s. And nowadays, you have a database and a GIS behind almost any work, any map. I mean, maybe a few retired colleagues will draw their map from hand. But uh, most of us uh, use uh, GIS. And uh, one thing that is important and that makes a difference between archaeological data and other sciences is that we are aggregative. It means it is interesting to work with a data set from the 1980s or from the 1920s or from the 19th century even, which is not true for several hard science uh, colleagues. 
And it also goes further because archaeology uses a lot of environmental data, which is difficult to uh, place in the same scale. Yeah. Then we have the problem with grey literature. I am always envy the solution in the British uh, area, in, the, in the Scotland or England, uh, where you have a lot of things online. Uh, we are far not uh, that good in France. Uh, in between you have the interrupt data online through the, the FASTI online Ariadne project. But for the other uh, private companies you don't. For the rescue excavation, uh, for the programmed excavation you don't. So it is difficult. And then you have the difficulty of the quoting. And it's a difficulty for us uh, and, of course, for people who start <coughs> to work uh, with, uh, with databases. And, of course, with the increase of the data, of the quantity of the data, we need computers if you want to uh, find what you search, uh, whatever uh, this might be. So I see different kind of databases that we aggregate or that we uh, match uh, in archaeology, master thesis uh, catalogues, PhD thesis, workshop or laboratory databases, CRM or heritage databases, field archaeology databases, and all the analysis, environmental uh, or uh, that kind of uh, databases for the actual and for the past. And bringing this together under one hat, of course, is difficult. So all those kind of projects with all the underlying databases uh, you can imagine from dots, from uh, cultures, from interpretations, from drawing, how do we reduce them to informatic data that we can share? Uh, this is one of the questions we asked. Plus, uh, what do we do with the uh, old databases that were put online through here Maison des Sciences de l'Homme, uh, Alsace, where I work? You have 10 different databases, and then you have here a project from Thousand Friends, you have a big European fossil pollen database, you maybe know. Um, how do we link those two projects, and how do we know them? Because, I mean, we are uh, the interested ones, and I guess. Uh, you are just like me, you, you note the, all the sites where you have to go uh, to check the, the new data. Plus also the question how to quote, do we quote tools, do we quote uh, versioning, do we quote who is the author, is it a person, is it an institution, is it a grant or a project. And all those are a problem, plus this yes, so-called uh, digital dark age. So where is the former versions of our data? Where is the former version of our uh, informant? And I guess you all know the trouble about scales in space and time, nested chronological systems between, for example, politicians and ceramologists or culturalists and Holocene. Uh, how do we integrate absolute datings with uh, C14, uh, that kind of stuff? And how do we do the alignment, the pluri or interdisciplinary uh, alignment? So uh, it is a lot of problem uh, that we have. One solution is uh, the free uh, software that we developed in, uh, in Strasbourg and uh, that I'm trying to sell you a free software. So uh, it's online, uh, it's free for your users, of course, of course it has a cost, but uh, it's not for the user. It's multilingual, which I think is very important. Multi-chronology, this also we found out, you can't ask the authors who agree to give you a database to uh, match to your uh, system. So they give it in their system and then uh, you can use it there. It's open to any scale except intrasites. It's one of several tools. Of course, there are dozens of different tools. I just mentioned two for, for friends. Uh, no, no. For thousand friends, you might check latera.net uh, or the best fair. For an patriarch is the national French uh, database, but difficult to access for uh, French researchers, so I guess for foreigners, even worse. <laughs> um, Archaeologist already connects to some of those. Uh, we do our best to improve, so it's not a bad solution. We are online, but we are not completely open. It means you need to ask uh, login and password. We have the problem with looting. In France, det detectoring is forbidden, so uh, if we want to get some data at all, uh, we need 
this uh, protected interface. So, so far, uh, we are behind uh, login and password. The idea was that anybody has access to a simple GIS to build a query and to be able to map some dots. Basically, it's what 90% of the students need, and they don't really need QGIS or ArcGIS for their work. They just need to uh, put some dots uh, on the screen. So, for example, here, Iron Age in the Upper Rhine Valley, uh, we have France, we have Germany, we have uh, two departments here, we have uh, four petits uh, there, and we have uh, data, you see it here, from books, from museums, uh, from uh, PhDs, and from environmental data also. Plus, you can check if you want some here, uh, weapons from Bronze Age or Iron Age from different uh, books or um, PhDs. It's a good teaching tool, any of you teaching uh, GIS, it's uh, more fun with the students to let them work on a real uh, database, on a real archaeological database, plus it's free. And uh, what we aggregate also is a lot of links. And I think this is very important uh, to know the projects uh, from the others, from the colleagues. So where do I get some data? Well, you also get it from all the existing projects. And uh, some, sometime I click to a link and it's dead. So that's a sustainability problem also, yes. Uh, when the name of our university or institute changes, you have to, uh, yes, change the access and don't always think this. So we, we try to be accurate. If you have a site with spatial data, don't hesitate to contact us. So I'll put you uh, extra on the thing. Of course, we have an index of the databases which were fed in Archaeogis, uh, so one which is uh, before you log in, and once you're logged in, you get more data. You got full metadata beyond Inspire. Uh, one of the problems being that the authors are really reluctant to complete this metadata correctly, what you also mentioned. Uh, they give you the data and say, yes, just do it. So uh, <laughs> this is a problem because it is, it is difficult. And then, of course, it's difficult for uh, reuse. We work on a simple bottom-up uh, ontology. Uh, alas, it was before I discovered the uh, uh, CDOC CRM and that kind of project. But yeah, the mandatory fields are a name of the site coordinates. Uh, you will cope. So you have to import a uh, CSV online. Uh, and when you create a request, uh, you can uh, get the CSV back. So this is the safest situation for sustainability of the data. I guess we, can, we will use CSV files for a few decades uh, or probably more uh, in the computers. Uh, we have, of course, a problem with the encoding where UTF-8, uh, which is in some Excel version, uh, pain in the ass, if I may say so. Uh, but it is important because of the umlaut, because of the accent circonflate, that kind of thing that you need uh, when you work in uh, humanities. And um, so, yeah, this is a little difficult to explain to the people. <laughs> About the archive in France, we have the chance to, uh, we have the, yeah, we are lucky, we have uh, CNRS and we have this humanum uh, structure uh, which uses parts of the servers from the CERN. So uh, we have the best uh, triple store, uh, red four, whatever you can wish uh, about uh, this. And they develop different tools, uh, Nakala has been very effective to uh, create uh, permalinks uh, DOIs. And uh, it's also a very good tool for the data management plan, because when you know, when you apply for a grant, you need this data management plan. But in the end, uh, there's no real control about has it been done? Is it online? Where? And it's maybe it's been checked in the six months after the end of the project. But if far four, five, six years later, you want to go on a site and get some archaeological data, it's very often difficult. So here an example from the Hydromain program for my colleague for Sicily and how the dots appear in archaeology. So it's just um, effective. 
Um, going back to the language, because uh, we are multilingual and I think it's important because it's not true that we all know enough uh, English to properly describe the site, at least in France. Uh, so uh, it's really important uh, that we have, yeah, for now we have French, German, English, uh, Spanish is incoming and it is possible to open to more languages for the users. And I think this is for sustainability important because elsewhere we are creating uh, trouble in the <coughs> databases which we don't need. Uh, it's it's complicated enough. And uh, yes, is it a ditch, a pitch, a hole, a pastel? It's uh, okay. Let me with my trout poteau and uh, fossé fos. There I know what it is, and I absolutely have no uh, problem about what I'm doing. So we can implement more languages. Yes, of course. Then we can go further, and going further, linking open data is for sustainability a very good solution. It helps us to discover new projects and to create cultural knowledge. So uh, what I call cultural knowledge is when you aggregate databases, you get more than just the sum of the dots. You also have other things that appear. And for example, our colleagues from uh, environment working on paleo channels are amazed to see our archaeological jobs. They're absolutely not interested, absolutely not interested, if it's a, a Roman villa or a Celtic hill fort, they are interested in the uh, BP AD datation of the Paleo channels. Am I too long? I, I should finish. So just finish, uh, finishing quick. So uh, as I said, it's multilingual, multi-chronology is not limited in uh, time or space. We're just building our user communities. Don't, don't hesitate to uh, come to us and uh, if uh, you need something, just uh, try to be sure that a site works as long as it has users. And I think this is really the most important rule about sustainability. As long as somebody is using your data, is using your site, it will exist somehow. But if it gets lost, if it gets forgotten, then it's lost. So for now, you can join the community uh, on archaeologist.org. For later, we might refill the CSV files somewhere else if a better project exists. And if not, we need to socialize and discuss about the databases to make sure that what we produce is not getting lost. Thank you. Thank you.